All right, guys, let's do it. Round 16 lists are here. Who thinks the uh, Panthers are going to win by 60 this week? What do you reckon? Is there a chance? Is there not? Broncos, what have they done? Seriously. Trying to ruin all our teams. Those of us that have to start testing new, the start Jordan Ricky. Crazy stuff. And police outside. Beautiful. So many changes in this Broncos side. All right. Richie Kenner comes in. Not relevant. Jesse Arthurs comes in. I was talking about him at the start of the season. With this kind of with this kind of stuff, guys, that that happens where where struggling teams just drop players straight up, I feel like it's uh, yeah, not even worth thinking about these types of players because it so quickly could turn around and, and Tessie could come back into the squad, and that's something to think about if you're looking at trading him out as well. Just such a really good cover play. He's got the center in the wing fullback duel, and and when he is playing, obviously you know not against these these top guns, but he. He has the chance to score a 40 or 50, and to trade him out when he's like, what, 360, 380k, it's almost not worth it. You know, so just think about that, um, unless, you know, someone's coming in and they're an absolute gun, which we'll talk about a little bit later, you know, guys like Schuster and Walker, these types of guys that have been touted to be the you know, next big thing, then they're, they're the kind of guys that you can, you can plug in and know that they're going to get some game time across the year, whereas someone like Arthur's, he's okay, but, you know, they've got Farnworth coming back and lots of stuff as well, so think about that. Milford's been dropped as well, so pretty unfortunate for for those people that have him because he has been scoring well, you know, even though his gameplay uh, hasn't been amazing. I definitely think he's played better this year than last year, though. Let me know what your thoughts are on that one. But yeah, the rest of the team we uh we lose Ricky to the bench, which you know at 490k is a bit of an interesting one, you know, at this stage. If we look at my squad here, you know, Ricky there 494, so he's an awkward price there. And if he if he starts to, to play off the bench and gets so you know even if he gets 40 to 50 minutes, which is Probably unlikely, I'd say, in this kind of pack when you got Haas playing big minutes, Lodges around that 50 minute mark. Uh, you've got Glenn there, who's going to play, you know, pretty much the full 80. TPJ as well in there. You know, you'd expect him to play on an edge, probably you know closer to 60 minutes, and then Carry going to be big minutes as well. And they've got four forwards on the bench. I don't think he's going to play big minutes there. And you know, at that price point, if he starts to get a 20 or a 30, you obviously can't play him. But then you. You, are, you run the risk of him starting to go down in value as well. So he's someone that I feel like if you can go him and we'll talk about you know Little in a second, but those two guys to a gun and a cash cow, and that's probably the only way to, to move him on this week. I wouldn't be trading him for someone that's you know a mid-ranger as well. The only other option is 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 someone like you know trading him to Latrell Mitchell or these types of guys that are guns in their center or wing fullback at that cheaper price point, you know, who average around that 50 mark, for example. I think that'd be a cool option. But, you know, again, what they could do is is change it all back quickly as well. Ricky, if they play terrible, he could come straight back into the starting side, for example. Uh, and on this on this Panthers side, Crichton still stays at number one. If, if you have him, I'd be holding him steady. Momorowski, I think, is a trade-in if you are looking for a keeper because I think he's probably moved to that stage. You know, he'll, he'll have his 30-odd game and he'll have his 50-odd to round out a 40-odd average. Burton keeps playing in his spots. He would have been a cool option in that first week. Obviously, you weren't to know that he... You know, Edwards is going to get injured and stuff like that, but that's that. Cleary, obviously, yeah, very very much a, a must-have, but it's very hard to get him in at 1.1 mil. <laughs> um, Luai, yeah, her feet, the rest of the guys, very much the same, so not much, not too much to talk about. Lin Yu, I'd think about possibly holding in your squad at this stage uh, for the next little bit. Again, could could get some extra minutes at some point. Surely it gets more than 25. There has to be an injury to this, to this Panther side at some point. How lucky have they been, especially last year and this year? I don't know if it's just their the work they do it out at, out at Penrith or what, but they're um they're staying on the park really well, and obviously that's helping them win a lot of games. So there you go. Move on to the Knights and Sharks. If you're enjoying this, guys, please hit like, hit subscribe. I really appreciate that. All right, those Knights boys. Pong is obviously still there, and he's a very very good option. He will play Origin, you'd imagine, in that number one jersey for for Queensland. So something to think about. But he's going to be one of your top four, you know, wing fullbacks by the end of the season. So. Definitely think about picking him up if you have the opportunity. Musgrove's there. Doubt that it will be forever, but someone to look at. Bradman Best is back. For him, he's obviously, he's currently our highest price center, and I think he's going to be a great option. It's just the question is going to be, is he right to go straight away? Is he going to be a little bit more timid in his running and not be able to get those, you know, the tackle breaks and offloads, tri assists, et cetera, that he, that he needs? So it's probably worth holding off for one week and seeing how he goes, and, and especially if the Knights aren't playing very well either his uh, opportunities will be uh, fewer and far between. 
Kurt Mann comes back after his concussion, which moves Watson back to 13. And Watson's going to be a great player to keep playing. Hopefully he gets back to his 50-odd scores. I'd imagine that that would be the case. Barnett's an interesting one. You know, getting 38 last week. And him and Frizzell just not playing as well. But when they're when the Knights are doing well, they're the ones that get the earlier ball out, out on the edges and, and can get some attacking stats through that and obviously more meters and stuff, and that all adds up. Um, so think about that before you trade any of them out. I think Barnett's a trade out before Frizzell because Frizz has that, you know, that pedigree of multiple years of doing really well, and and Barnett probably has you know half a season here and there over the last couple of years that he's done well. So something to think about. Will Kennedy? I've had a couple of people ask if he's worth it. I don't think so at this stage. Like I think you kind of need to start with him if you want him at the start. Uh, Tracy's back in there, so if you got him, you could probably play him in the centers this week. Uh, who else we got? Moylan, slowly becoming a trade out, but yeah, you know, with all the injuries this week, all the injuries and, and you know, losses to teams, drops, people are getting dropped. You could probably hold him uh, for this week. Townsend probably get a few few really good weeks out of him to go and, and really milk that, but I wouldn't be trading him in. Teague Wilson, Teague Wilson gets his uh gets to keep his spot. Uh, how lucky are the people that brought him in that first week? It's so what happens, you know. Obviously in footy, you think, yeah, okay, the guy's not worth it. He's gonna have two weeks he'll probably score well in that two weeks but he's not worth a trade in and then you know after he's in the back end of his second week second game graham gets injured and and now wilton gets his spot for longer so an interesting option if you're looking he's probably going to be out for four to six weeks so you know if you need a second row forward then and he's a slight option but I, I still wouldn't try to touch him at this stage talakai comes back in the 17 role as well so very interesting for them there obviously got a lot of uh a lot of big boys on their interchange. So um, just think about the minutes and how that's going to work out. Moving down to the Storm and the Roosters. How good the game this is going to be. Interesting one in this one is going to be if you're going to be playing Sam Walker this week. My thoughts are he won't go as well. But you saw what he did last week. It just the, the first half or so worried me there. Obviously, he's going to get better and better every week. But I think he's still going to have a, There'll be a game in there somewhere where he kills us and gets a 20. And I feel like this is a chance of being this one. But in terms of how our teams are going to be looking with you know little out and these types of guys, you might have to play him. But still a great trade in. Definitely, um, he's going to do well over the season. The question will just be what happens when Lamb comes back in the next sort of you know three to three to four or five weeks. Uh, you know, because Hutchinson's playing pretty well also. Mine is a good option. Doesn't play Origin, um, but does miss round thirteen. So think about that. On the on the Storm side, you've got you've got Olam in there. He was someone that we spoke about in the yeah storm so olam is someone that plays round 13 if you have him then great you'd be keep wanting to keep him there i uh, wouldn't be bringing him in but same with remus smith i'd be holding them at this stage you might have to play remus if you if you've got tessie in there at the moment Munster, you got a hold people keep talking about him just hold him jerome hughes is more chance of a of a trade out but he does also play round 13 brandon smith keeps the nine role with uh with harry grant still on the bench but that could change you know on game day or you know, they might play exactly how they did on the weekend um, and just slowly bring him back to that 80-minute role and would, would be good if, if Grant stays on the bench for a little bit and then we can pick him up in a bunch of weeks there to help our squads out. Uh, Benjamin Marsh on the Rooster side keeps his spot, which we would have thought because they're down, what, six hookers at this stage, but he has to be he has to fight his uh, his charge. So he's got, you know, one week was the if they took the early, early plea and, and it'll be two weeks if he uh, misses that. So keep an eye on him, but he's going to be a solid option over the next few weeks. He does have Kieran, who's back now, who will probably spell him at the hooking role. So you'd think maybe 45 to 35 minutes or 50 to 30 uh, of, you know, for, the, for that hooking role there. But he's fairly cheap and could help you out. Tupanua, I think you can keep him for his scoring capabilities, but in terms of money-making, I think that's that's gone at this stage. And if you wanted to, if you, you know, if your chance was to trade him up to a Crichton or a to have a feed or something like that, then he can. But I still think Tupanua is going to have a 70 score in him uh, very soon if he gets back to you know to full health and, and can do well there. So that's my thoughts on those two teams there. Just just you know people are still trading in Verils. Just just wait, <laughs> just wait with him. He's not there yet. Um, yeah, he's not even getting close to the reserve. He's still got a bunch of weeks away left yet. All right, Eagles Titans. So all right, not too much to talk about. We do have an Olakatu? I don't know how to say it. Olakatu? I'll try that one. See what, you know, let me know how, uh, how I should be saying that in the comments for my, uh, for my I don't know if that's Maori, for my 
for my Kiwi boys out there. Um, Schuster's still in there doing well, and you've got to keep playing him. For Lockie Croker owners, you have him there scoring okay. you probably get the 50 minutes again with, with Cuss there. You could probably milk him for one more week. You know, he, he scored 50-odd last week, and you could hold him again if you need to trade him out. Probably don't have to because we've got a bunch of other issues, so I'd keep him on there making your money for this week. Um, but what do we got? Goz, yeah, Goz is out, obviously injured, and, and you've got someone like Siren coming back fairly soon. So I wouldn't be, again, wouldn't be thinking about Ola Kawatu, uh, but, you know, it could happen. It could be the same thing as Tag, Tag Wilton, for example, where he comes in and does well, and, and then there's another injury in there, which we hope not for the poor Manly boys. Tommy Chop's back, which is great. On the uh, Titan side, not too much new there. You, know, you got Peachy. There's a lot of good options in this team. Fogs, Peachy, Corey Thompson, Brimson, I think, is very, getting very close to a trade-in. Uh, Fa'asu Malawi, he uh, unfortunately is struggling. <laughs> if you hold him for, for the 80 and got the 22, it's a nice, a nice average of about, what, 50-odd um, over the two weeks. So I think he's a trade-out. But they are playing the Manly boys, and it could be a fairly close game, or they could smash them, who knows, and he could get some attacking stats. So completely up to you what you want to do with that. But again, trade up or trade down to a cash cow. Rabbitohs and Tigers, and here's the big game. Obviously, the Rabbitohs boys are flying. Not too much new on this side. We've got Colin Matangi still out for a week. Uh, Benji moves back to 14 for Cody Walker coming back in. So that's the only real change. You've got keepers in Gags, Mitchell, Graham. Reynolds is doing okay. Cook's in there. A lot of people still trying, wanting to trade Cook out. Just remember, he's going to be volatile in his scoring this year. He's going to have his games where he's really good on the attacking side, and then he's going to have his games where he gets the mid-40s and gets an early rest. So hopefully this game's a little bit closer and, and he can keep that 80-minute roll, but please don't trade him straight to McCulloch. I think that's a stupid idea. Uh, on the Tigers side, we spoke about them in the uh, in the buy schedule videos, and, and they play round 13. So be thinking about these guys. Dane Laurie, Roberts, I think you know, you're probably not going to hold him until round 13, I, I doubt. So he might be a traded option, but you know, this week, if you've got Testy, you might have to hold him, uh, Roberts, and, and, and play him. Tommy Tillau is getting a lot cheaper, and this could be an interesting one come closer to round 13 is to bring him in to play that one and, and ha have him as cover for center or wing fullback and, and move him on later in the year if you want to, if he starts to play well and make some cash. Um, Adam Dewey is a really cool option, not going to be play, playing Origin, and they play the first buy round, so think of him. Brooks, keep holding him, I will be. A big one is Mr. Little has been dropped. He's in the number 18 jersey, and we'll see what happens come game day. But Simkin is one of those kids that have been touted to to do great things. So, you know, not not as high on him as like a, a Schuster or a, a Walker in, in that in that frame that you know people have been talking about him. But he's been killing it in um, in his New South Wales Cup game. So and you know, look great in the trial game, and a lot of people have been talking about him. So he's one of those guys at 228 that you could plug in. Um, you know, using as him as a cash cow, but at worst a cash out, who's going to score pretty well when he plays. Um, I'd I'd even tempt to play him this week in your in your on your reserves if you, you know, if you had, you, know, you could probably play someone like Alvaro over him. But anyone under Alvaro, I'd say you'd be playing Simkin, which would be which would be cool because he's going to, you know, you'd expect him to play fifty odd minutes and, and score pretty well there. Atukamano has has taken over Musgrove, and this is what I was saying about Mus. He, uh, he could score well for you for a couple of weeks and then they just you know, they just change it up, especially with the Tigers and how they do things. But Stefano's been playing really well and he's earned, I'd say he's definitely earned his spot in the starting side. And if that means more minutes or not, I'd expect him to at least have the 41 minutes that he did last game. So if you think that's enough for him to score a 40 and, and be good enough for your side, I think that's, you know, you could almost play him this week you know, with some upside of possibly playing closer to 45, 50 minutes. So something to think about with Oitukamanu took there. Lucy Leilua had a few attacking stats on the weekend and got a high 50. So he's someone that's going to be really cool with them not playing, you know, obviously him not playing Origin, but them playing the first buy and also with Alex Twal there. So an interesting one there. And you, you're hoping that uh, the Twal keeps getting the big minutes. But, you know, as a lot of people have been talking about, he's not a ball playing 13. I think that's a really important role in this day and age. But, you know, his, his PPM and his scoring in fantasy is, is great. So... Keep him if you've got him, and he's a, you know get becoming close to an option if you don't have him. All right, three games to go. Raiders and Eels. Aikens comes into the fullback role, and I think that's better for someone like Rapana to stay on the wing. He he scores a lot better there. You know he has his he has okay games at the fullback position, but I just think he's better suited. At, you know, getting the kick returns and, and running cross field, Palmer blokes off, doing you know getting his breaks down down the outside. I think he's much better in that role than than being a passing you know fullback etc. So. 
Uh, happy with that hit for him and any owners like that. Uh, Papa Lee is doing okay, but again, I probably wouldn't be targeting him at this stage. Tarpany's struggling a bit. Hudson Young's doing well. So Tarpany, probably give another week or two, but yeah, I've spoken about him in, the pre in previ previous episodes, is that he's someone that just doesn't get enough minutes. Like he, he's that very much that in impact play. And if he scores tries and you know, makes a million offloads and tackle breaks, then he can get a 60 or 70. But when he has a, a slow game, he gets a 30. And it really just brings his average back closer to that you know, high 40s to 50 and, and kills you there. So annoying for him, but there you go. On the yield side, Opa, still doing well. Not a keeper. Fergo, same thing, doing all right. Not a keeper. Uh, we've got Mil Will Smith in there, so Brown's taken a, a early guilty plea for it. He's been charged, so he's out for the week, uh, which is really good for for Moses. Obviously, you'd, you'd imagine he, you know, he's going to score pretty high in this. Uh, you'd expect it to be a pretty tightly contested match against the Raiders, so still a great option. And, and they're someone, they're a team that plays in that round thirteen as well, which is really cool. And you know, you can have him in there and plug him in. But obviously, you've got a lot of guys just uh, Cleary, Walker. O'Sullivan, all these guys doing really well. So I wouldn't, I don't feel like a half is a, a big target at the moment. I'd rather get a mid or, or an edge or even a, you know, a center or a wing fullback to, to help you help your stocks out there. But yeah, Reed Marnie's doing well as well. Keep him going. Madison's back. Whether he plays or not is a different story. I hope that he's okay. Isaiah Papali, he moves back to the bench. And a lot of people are picking him up and he's he's not ridiculously overpriced now. He's he's priced in the, in the low 50, so a 52 kind of average, just over 700. Um, but I think that's where kind of where he's going to be averaging around that 50 to 55. So if you feel like he's going to be able to do better than that and keep up his amazing form over the first five games, then by all means bring him in. He's not going to play. Uh, he'll be playing the first buy round as well, so that'll be helpful. All right, moving on to last two games, Dragons and Warriors. Uh, Bird becomes a really interesting option in the centers if you need a straight spot because he's 405k, testing you 360 odd. Uh, that could be really helpful for you. kloon uh, has been playing really well. But again, not, not going to be fantasy relevant. We've got Ben Hunt coming back soon. Where does he end up? Does he end up on the bench? Probably he does. Probably the big news out of this is the fact that Josh McGuire has been signed with the Dragons in, and he could play as early as, as this week, which I don't know how much good that does to someone like Alvaro. Who gets who gets dropped? Is Kate Ellis get dropped? You'd imagine so, right? Merrin and Alvaro have been too good. Like Kerr's pretty solid on... On the edge there, Laurie's been doing pretty well. So, you know, the whole team's been doing well. Where do you fit him in? I think Ellis might be the guy to to make way. And, and how many minutes does Maguire play? And that's, yeah, scary for someone, you know, an Alvaro owner, for example, or a Fulmeano owner. Does he take Tyrell's spot? Jeez, that'll be interesting. Um, but, yeah, that's that's the only real thoughts on the Dragon side. And on, on the Warriors, you got Pete Huku comes back into the team for Fusatua. He's finally gone. You can finally get rid of him. Um Montoya had a head knock, so he has to pass through some HIA protocols, but should be okay. Uh, Cody and Sean O'Sullivan. I think probably last last chance to get O'Sullivan before he, his price exceeds too much. And again, we've got so many half options. It's like, do we want to spend more money on, on O'Sullivan? I think last week would have been a really good opportunity. Um, don't expect him to score 60, 70 every week, but um, doing amazing if you own him at this stage. Listen, Armour keeps his number eight spot. Toe Harris stays in the number 10. And we've got... Bunty R4 back on in the 15 jersey, and a lot of people are really tempted to pick him up. And yeah, look, I think he's a decent option, but I wouldn't be trying super hard to get him in your squad. Josh Curran comes in onto the number 11 jersey, which is which is really cool. Elliot Katoa has been dropped, so interesting to see what's going to happen with Curran. And obviously, um, you got Siren and injured as well, so there's a few things to think about with that one. And you know, as to how long these guys are going to be out for. So he's a pretty risky one. Even though he's at 228k, I think he's fairly risky. Murchie played pretty well, and he kept his spot also. Jazz Savanga, a lot of people are talking about. Just remember, they're not going to be playing in the round 13 by. He should have some decent minutes here in the number 13 role, but yeah, how long that lasts for. He Last last year, I picked him up, and he did really well. Yeah, average, average just over 50 kind of thing, and, and did a job. Um, and has the, the chance to go big and get a 60-odd 70, so... Decent option, but I would again wouldn't be tearing my team apart to pick him up. I'd probably just rather Papali'i over Jazz at this stage, given he plays around 13 and has been scoring a bit better and a bit more consistent uh, with those minutes as well. So that's that side on the Warriors. Tanor Brown came comes back as well this week, and our last one here we are. Two in a row. I think it's already set, isn't it? We're going to win two in a row. What do you guys think? We're, uh, we're, on, we're on the charge for the top eight. Flying. We'll be two from six. That's my call. 
these doggies, hey, they're struggling big time. And if you've got Kotrick, he's still on the bench and for oh, on the bench on the on the wing for your Cowboys side. Holmes is doing okay. Hampton is probably the only interesting one in in this uh, in this team at this stage with uh, with his fifty one on the weekend. And you know, you think about it, they got absolutely smashed, and he picked up twenty eight. Played well this week. He got fifty one. I don't think he's played a lot of um, a lot of half for for years. So you know, he, he's looking okay. And the way that the game's played at the moment, the the dominant halves seem to score really well in in every, in every team. Like you see, what Townsend's doing. He's never done this before. Like I was looking, I was even I was thinking about picking him up at the start of the year, and I was like, okay, if he if he scores like he did last year when Johnson was out, you'd expect him to average between forty five and fifty. And he's averaging fifty nine. Which is crazy. So it looks like the halves are getting a bit of a bump, and he might be able to do that. And, and you could, you could probably pick him up if you want to in the centers, but I'd be very scared to do so. He covers what wing fullback and center, which is which is cool. But I don't know. I feel I just feel have this feeling he's going to bury us. <laughs> could do well for a week like this week against the Dogs, and then struggle from there. But Tamalolo comes back. Lockie Burr keeps his spot on the bench. So I'd like to see what Lolo does for a little bit. He, they have a buy the first round, so. Um, he might be a cool option if he if he bottoms out in price and then starts getting bigger minutes. You might be able to pick him up in round fourteen. On the uh, on the dog side, you've got Avrilo keeping his spot. So he's, he'll be an, a good one to play at, uh, in your centers this week. And who we have Luke Thompson's playing in the thirteen role. So what have we got? Um, Josh Jackson just said that he I just read that he um he's torn his calf, like partial tear of his calf. So it should be three to six weeks. I think Thompson's going to score pretty well. I really do. Um, yeah, it could be if he's getting decent minutes. Again, unfortunately, they don't play round thirteen, but I think he can score pretty well for your side over the next, you know, six seven weeks and and make a bit of cash and and score closer to that fifty mark if he's getting you know closer to 55, 60 minutes. But again, you're looking at their bench and they've got all middles in there. And obviously, uh, Torpenny came on and played thirty five minutes last game, and he'll probably do the same. So. Uh, I think well done if you picked him up last week, but I don't know if he's a pickup this week. When you got someone like Simkin who you can pick up at a two twenty eight, for example, I think that's probably a better option. Adam Elliott went back and, and, and had a better game this week, and again when they when they get some attacking stats, he's going to get that 55, 60, 65 scores. Um, that's about all, guys. There we are with the with the team list for round six. Let me know what kind of trades you're, you're looking to make this week. Um, as I said, please go back into all the previous videos of all the all the games for you know the wrap up games for round five and that would um, that will really be able to help you make some decisions on your team and then just take some of our advice with the with the cash cows I spoke about. There's a few I'm interested in, a few I don't think are that great. But please if you can just go through those videos. I think they'll be really helpful in, in making a decision just so you're not flooding the comments with uh, you know, do I trade this for person for this person and stuff like that. But I say guys, I really appreciate all the love and support. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're enjoying this, and we'll see you in the next bunch of videos. Have a good night.